I'd say I've had around 20 concussions in my life. When I was about 19 or 20, I had five concussions in a year. A week after, I'd be straight back out in the field. I noticed a few symptoms such as social anxiety. Headaches started happening as well. I struggled to retain information. 20 years later, the neurologist likened my brain to a car crash victim. Uh, I'm Luke, 41 years old. Uh, I've got a brain injury related to repeated head trauma. I grew up in Maitland, a country town in South Australia. Living in the country, um, sport was you know, a huge part of, of growing up. When I was 16, I moved to Adelaide with mum and, and we lived right around the corner from North Adelaide Footy Club, so I uh, ended up starting my career there at, at under 17s. I played 194 games uh, in the South Australian National Football League um, from 2000 to 2014. I started off as a, as a tagger, so as a 19-year-old, I was trying to um, stop the, the opposition um, gun midfield, so because I was only a young kid starting out, the opposition would be quite physical with me. Yeah, so I got five concussions throughout the year. You know, there wasn't much education or um, insight into, into concussions, so um, I just listened to the advice of my doctor. My club doctor said, look, you'd probably either retire or try wearing a helmet. That became my armour for the rest of my career. I've been knocked out quite a lot of times, but I probably had about 20 concussions throughout the rest of my career. I mean, probably my worst concussion, I was out for seven minutes, so um, you kind of, yeah, don't, I can't really remember how that felt. You know, I was getting a bit of those dizziness and, and, and nausea symptoms, but I really thought that if I, if I rested throughout the off-season, I'd be fine. But nearing the end of my career, I started noticing some symptoms that I, I hadn't had before. I didn't even want to walk into the club rooms. I was so anxious and socially on edge. I'd have to start having a few drinks before I walked into a crowd of people. And the, the other symptom was short-term memory loss. I couldn't even remember what I was having for dinner the night before. I just felt helpless and hopeless as a person. I started trying to see some specialists to find out answers and, and no one really could tell me what was going on. I didn't cope very well, to be honest. Probably about um, a year into having these symptoms. Yeah, I started going to a pretty dark place. My mental health really declined over that period. It just seemed like a like a vicious cycle of me using alcohol to combat my my feelings, and then waking up the next day and you know couldn't function properly as as a father, as a person. I was probably at the point of um, losing losing everything, to be honest. Um, my family, probably my my work, and um, probably my life, to be honest. I di I didn't. Um, yeah. My mum actually said to me, like, you, you had a lot of concussions in your career. Why don't you go f find out if, if that's some of the reasons why you're having these symptoms? So I got a series of brain scans and I, I saw an Adelaide neurologist and he likened my brain to a car crash victim. He referred me to a neurologist in Sydney, and after a few consultations with her, she said, your brain looks like you've had about 50 concussions, and that coupled with my symptoms, um, she she diagnosed with me with probable CTE, chronic traumatic encephalopathy. It's a, it's a tongue twister, that, that last one. From my understanding, CTE is from repeated head knocks, so it, it's a degenerative brain disease. From those repetitive head knocks, People show up with different symptoms, like some people have, you know, irritability and, you know, ang anger kind of problems. Mine showed up in the social anxiety and, and the headaches. I hit rock bottom and contacted my Sydney-based neurologist. I just reached out in, in absolute desperation. She put me on some medication, which has really stabilised my symptoms. Social anxiety, um, you know, we got on top of that. My headaches subsided with, with the medication. 
And she also said, like, you've got some effects, but learn how to, to manage it properly and you can live, hopefully, a normal life. I've put in really healthy habits, like, you know, every morning at 7 o'clock I'll do some form of fitness. I don't really drink alcohol anymore. I've got myself back on track, so I really live my life thinking that I, I don't have CT now, because that was, that was really detrimental for, for me and everyone around me. You know, I've got three young boys and I, I wanted them to grow up with, a, with a, um, a father they could be proud of and now being in, in a really good place and knowing that I'm a good dad, I'm a good person, I'm a good father. Yeah, that brings me a lot of joy. Back then I thought bravery was getting up and continue playing when you had a, a big hit. Bravery now is, you know, speaking up and being honest about your symptoms. Um, we know too much about concussions now. I teamed up with a concussion legacy foundation who are doing an amazing work. Last year I went out to around 30 community sporting clubs I left every single one of those visits feeling like really great, like feeling really positive on, on making a difference. I want my story to be one of hope um, rather than despair. Footy, it still is part of my identity. You know, I wouldn't take anything back. The only thing I'd uh, change is my recovery time. If you get a decent head knock, you, your brain's probably going to take a good month to recover from that. My main message is not fearing contact sport, but just making sure if you do can get concussed, treat it seriously and treat it like any other injury. If you want to learn more about concussion, uh, check out the links below.